Every year, Apple drops a brand new iOS update around September. And every year, I get the same question. Is it cooked yet? Spoiler alert, usually not. That's right. Updates are exciting, but day one installs are often half-baked. So today, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you should never update your iOS, iPadOS, macOS, or any OS on release day. We'll look at a little of the history of past releases and some of the things that have gone wrong that have filled my inbox with questions from folks. Hello, my name is Pete Johns. This is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record, and release your best music. And yes, the fancy new iPhones and iPads and Macs are great. And iPad OS and iOS 26 and Mac OS 26 have some new features that may be making you think that you should dive in and update. But let me tell you, just hit the pause button for a while. Or, you know, go for it. But buyer beware, caveat emptor, you do you boo, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, if you are a creator and if you're in the middle of a big project, say a big song, timber song, my recommendation has, is, and always will be to not update just yet. Wait for that dot oh one or even better, that point one release. We always get them. They always fix some of the bugs that regardless of how much beta testing and how much planning goes into this stuff, always do appear. Should we dive in with number one? Uh, day one bugs are inevitable. Yeah. Do we remember back to the days of iOS 13 back in 2019? There were widespread bugs. And in fact, within just a few days, we had 13.1 and 13.2 wasn't far behind. So iOS 13 added a whole bunch of really good features. It was a massive update. Probably only iOS 11 had bigger updates than iOS 13. But your early adopters... What do you end up being if you adopt the public version on day one? Well, you're basically just a, an unpaid beta tester. So unless you want to be part of the beta program and you've got a second device that you want to use, updating on day one, you can experience some of these day one bugs. Reason number two, app compatibility can often lag behind. So when there are big changes to an iOS or an iPad OS, the developers, either through their own development cycle or a lack of time or the inability to just get all of the details in place, means that sometimes third-party apps aren't ready. They're not available to be used with the new version. Or even worse and more commonly, they think they are, but they're not. For instance, that iOS 13, again, uh, it broke some apps with its memory management. iOS 14's widgets and home screen redesign caused crashes until the devs were able to patch the release. So yeah, if you want complete compatibility, that's why waiting for that dot one or even dot two release is usually a great idea. So if you're reliant on third-party apps, uh, third-party plugins, if you're a musician, are you V3s, using laughs, you're using all sorts of things for your video creation, your audio creation, you don't want to risk that stuff, do you? Again, if you want to live on the edge and if you want to give it a go, by all means, update. But you may regret it. And uh, look, if you've got a second device, that's the best way to go. If you've got a device that's not your daily driver, then that's the one that you'll want to update. Reason number three, battery drain. I mean, look, battery drain is one of those things that if you talk to some people, they say, oh, yes, every time I update to the new iOS, my battery's worse. And other people say, oh, no, mine's actually been better. And some people like me think it's about the same. But there have been instances, for instance, at iOS 5 all the way back in 2011 and iOS 13, which is going to get a few mentions in this one, in 2019, were pretty notorious. There were lots of reports of folks updating, especially their older devices. Uh, and the very fact that uh, the, the patch for 13.1.1 actually referenced in the Apple release notes to fix the battery drain issue. So yeah, it's not always, sometimes it is just the way it feels. And sometimes they add new features that can put a little bit more pressure on the processing power and the battery within your device. But sometimes it's really legitimately a thing, a, a memory leak or a hole in the processing that just means that it's running cycles that doesn't have to. It's draining your battery quicker than it needs to. So <clears throat> if you want to make sure 
don't update. Are you, are you sensing a theme here? <laughs> and I don't want to say that I'm negative. I, I actually love the new changes to iOS and iPadOS 26. I can't wait <clears throat> until the dot one where it's going to be stable. And then I will 100% put my seal of approval on everyone updating. It's just not quite time yet. Not quite time. All right, reason four related to that, and we sort of alluded to it with the battery stuff, but performance issues, especially on older devices. So iOS 7, do we remember this? Anyone that was rocking the iPhone 4 back in iOS 7 and we all updated? Well, I didn't for the longest time. I feel a bit smug about that, but everyone who updated not only had to deal with all the new layouts and features and how it worked, but yeah, it slowed down their iPhone 4s quite a lot. Uh, iOS 9 uh, led to lawsuits from users claiming Apple slowed their older devices. And uh, in iOS 8, 8.1.1, actually had, again, notes to say it was improving performance on iPhone 4S and iPad 2. So there have been many times where this has happened. And look, is it better? You'll notice that all of those are in the past. So these days, Apple's devices are actually, I'd argue and say that anything four, five, six, seven years old in terms of an Apple device is still pretty good. It's still going to be able to run your latest version of the operating system. So the days before, when I went from my iPad Air 2 up to an iPad Pro, it was night and day. My iPad, iPad Air 2 uh, didn't graduate past uh, iOS 13, I think, uh, and there's a reason for that. Whereas these days, I think that the difference, every year the iterative difference between last year's and this year's device is a lot less. So this is probably a lesser problem now, but still, if your device, so for me, I've got an iPad Pro, the M4, and I've also got an iPad Pro from 2020 with the old, I know, a five-year-old iPad, and it's, you call it old now, but the old A12Z processor, and yeah, running iPad OS 26, it's, a, it's noticeably slower. Why? Because the new M series chips are ridiculous. They are fast and they fly. So if you've got a new device, you're going to have less of those problems. Number five, security patches come quickly anyway. So even if you do update, here's the thing. Apple still support the last iOS. This is what you got to really understand. It's that iOS and iPadOS and macOS, the last version, version 18, it's still getting security patches. If you're up to date, if you've got the latest version of iOS or iPadOS 18, you're cool. You're not going to have security issues. So sometimes I tell you, you have to update because there's a day, there's a zero day or there's some sort of security issue that could actually affect your device right now. And they're the updates that I always say, do it now, just get it done. Whereas you're still safe. You're 100% safe on iOS and iPadOS 18. Well, never 100%. No one's ever 100% safe on anything. As soon as the device is online, it's vulnerable. But you know what I mean. Uh, any, any known issues have been patched, both in the new iOS 26 and in the latest version of 18. So uh, wait for the inevitable quick fix that we'll no doubt get at least at the point 01. Reason number six, it can take a long time. Uh, when you when it's first released, the servers can take a long time. When I had to update my iPhone, it took a while uh, because everyone's requesting it. Day one, millions of people are hammering Apple's servers, which can result in stalled downloads and estimated time remainings going from 26 minutes out to two hours back to 13 minutes. You know, you know the drill. You've done this sort of stuff before. And yeah, user reports uh, confirm this, that on day one, every year, uh, it, it happens. There's people that are sitting there and their devices are waiting and waiting and waiting and then having to update and, and set everything back up. It takes some time out. So again, if you just wait that week, two weeks, month, depending how risk averse you are, you're going to have a much easier time because the servers aren't going to be hit hard and you're doing your bit for the environment. Because remember, every time you hit a download button, there's a server somewhere else that's spinning up that's sending you that file. And if Apple have to add more and more and more so that they can deal with the demand, then it's using up more energy uh, because they have to add more servers and add more power to create more download files for you. It's the sort of that hidden thing we don't think about. I used to work in energy and you don't, if you don't see it, you don't think about it. That's why people uh, get obsessed when they're like, oh, my power bill's too large. They walk around turning off lights and I'm like, you've got a 2400 watt radiator sitting in the corner that's using 24 times what your 100 watt light bulbs are. 
and you're not turning that off. So yeah, if it's invisible, we don't think about it. That's a very random point that's not really related to this podcast. But there you go. You don't you, you come here to learn about John's past, don't you? All right, number seven. Uh, features don't always work as advertised. So for instance, back in iOS 11, which was a massive update, the control center toggles didn't fully disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth only disconnected temporarily. So there were things like with that new control center was great when it got working, but again, it didn't really get working well until 11.1 when that updated and that fixed a lot of these issues. <clears throat> the iOS 12, the screen times were inaccurate. So parents everywhere were yelling at their children when their children were not actually using as much screen time as it said they were. And uh, often new features are unfinished or not quite polished at release. We've seen it time and time again where something will drop and then, yeah, it, they flip-flop back on it in the dot one or even in the dot oh one release because they put it out there and they realise that, yeah, even though it kind of survived all the beta testing, as soon as it hits development and it goes out there for everyone – yeah, people don't like it or it's causing other issues. Flow-on effects happen, and that's the thing. This is a complicated bit of architecture, right? You're talking about a number of different devices. Luckily for Apple, they're all Apple devices. It's not quite like Windows where it's a thousand different manufacturers that they have to worry about. At least Apple are just Apple. But even so, there are so many different configurations, people in different countries, people using different apps. Just think about it. Every iPhone and iPad is its own unique ecosystem. No one's iPhone or iPad has the exact same photos, applications, plugins, uh, network connections because you're in different countries, SIM card information, Wi-Fi connections, people are using different routers and different things. So every single device is different. So it is, it is hard uh, to make sure that every feature is going to work perfectly and as advertised on every device. Reason number eight, third-party accessories break. Oh, did we get, oh, did we have this? Remember I, iOS 7 uh, introduced Bluetooth stack changes that broke connections with things like car stereos and with speakers. Uh, major updates often cause temporary issues with docks or lightning accessories or Bluetooth gear or you, these days your USB-C hubs and your USB-C adapters. You, if you can pause and just make sure that it's okay, then you'd be happy because guess what? If you're someone like me or someone like you, if you've got your iPad or your iPhone hooked into a USB-C adapter that's running an HDMI adapter, that's got power pass-through, that's hooked up to USB microphones or MIDI keyboards or audio interfaces, you know how challenging it can be to get all that stuff working. And one little change going from iOS or iPadOS 18 to 26 could change everything. And a special warning to those folks using Lightning-based gear still. If you're not using the genuine Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter, um, we've seen that happen before. Uh, I, iOS 11 and then 12 and 13, every time one of those was released, my comment section and inbox were filled to the brim with folks telling me that, that the new iOS bricked their gear and I had to break it to them that that uh, $5 Amazon or $10 eBay adapter they bought doesn't have the chip in it. And it's not, people say, oh, it's Apple being bad because they're, no, they're just adding new features that will only work with their lightning to USB adapter. So yes, you've got to spend 40 bucks, but you spend it once and then you don't have to again. And these days, the vast majority of us are all using USB-C devices. So the problem has kind of fixed itself because USB-C is not a, a proprietary format that Apple use. So therefore you can kind of use anything and it should still work. That being said, yeah, we've still seen issues where things can happen and they get updated. So don't do that. Number nine, uh, you lose stability on your mission critical devices, your daily drivers. So iOS 11, for instance, uh, the mail app, the mail app uh, broke some Microsoft Exchange accounts. I was actually working at the time uh, in a corporate environment and uh, yeah, it had problems with uh, with syncing the mail when, and we were told <laughs> in the corporate world, you are basically held to ransom. If you dare try to update on day one, you'll have your IT team uh, immediately on your back saying, we told you not to do that, Peter. 
and you need to do what the IT team say, Peter. Uh, you, uh, iOS 13, uh, the reminders app sync, uh, people lost tasks. It's like, oh no, I didn't take Fido for his flea treatment and now there's fleas everywhere because iOS 13 didn't remind me because the reminders app didn't work. Uh, yeah, and uh, the, even the US Department of, uh, of Justice advised employees to delay iOS 13 due to bugs. And that's the thing. If you're in government departments, if you're in uh, corporate environments, they will not update day one. I remember working on Windows 7 when Windows 10 had been available for like two years. Like corporates are very much, they're about security, but they're not about new features. They do not want you to have the new hotness. They want you to be working on older systems and older devices. And uh, if you if you know, you know. All right, let's round it out, shall we, with number 10. And that is that patience equals knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. Just imagine there's a sports car and a bunch of books behind me. Again, if you know, you know. Uh, early adopters reveal the pain points and the later users benefit. It's as simple as that. I've always said on this channel, let me be your guinea pig. <laughs> I could be your long lost pal. Um, yeah, if you let me be the guinea pig. Let me test this stuff out so that you don't have to. Because I and people like me do like trying out the new thing, do like checking out the new hotness, and we will find out for you what works and what doesn't work. And look, maybe one day, maybe in the future, maybe iOS 27 will be the first year that it works great out of the box. And I say to you, day one, just have a crack. Just just install it anyway. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> There's yet to be an iOS or iPad OS update where I've said, yes, it's safe. Go ahead and do it. But uh, maybe, who knows in the future? So yeah, we, we the, the iOS 7 was the classic one where you know the, the parallax animations caused some people to be motion sick. Uh, and it became obvious after the first week. And, and then things can be adjusted and, and changed. And iOS 13, as we've talked about a few times, poor, poor iOS 13, it's got a bad reputation. It was right when I, I was, this channel was kind of at its peak. And uh, I, I don't know, I probably owe the success of my channel to how flimsy iOS 13 was upon launch because, yeah, we, we, we spent a lot of time sitting around kumbayaing with people going, uh, yeah, we're, we're all in this together, folks, and uh, we'll, we'll get through this. But, yeah, we have people with bricked devices. We have people with bricked hardware. We have people with uh, third-party apps that just were not working at all, and it wasn't literally until 13.2 that all the bugs got ironed out and people were back up and running. So to recap... Uh, iOS and iPadOS, the updates are exciting, aren't they? But history shows that uh, a little patience will pay off if you can possibly resist it. Recommendation, wait at least for that .01 or preferably the .1 release. That's when things tend to get the most stable. Uh, and uh, remember, the question is, is it, is it, is it here? It's, is it cooked yet? Is it ready to serve? I've been your chef, Pete Johns. This has been Studio Live Today podcast. And if you liked it, hit the like button. And if you'd like to learn a whole lot more about creating, recording and releasing on your devices running the old iOS or iPad OS, you can check out all the links down in the description. Join the email newsletter too, studiolivetoday.com slash email. You'll get a weekly digest of everything going on around here. It is Song Timber still. So if you're enjoying Song Timber, let me know how your Song Timber song is going. We've got a whole bunch more live shows happening here as well you can get to those at studiolivetoday.com slash live and remember you can support me because i am uh, independent i am the team i am studio live today this is me so if you'd like to support me you can buy some merch like the mugs and the t-shirts over at studiolivetoday.com slash merch and you can also donate by using super chats super thanks super stickers super hypes whatever else youtube's added in lately or go to studiolivetoday.com slash donate to donate via paypal hey Thanks so much for being here. As we say at the end of each and everything we do around here, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, and uh, don't update. I'll see you next time.